It doesn't what? It has to be perfect, right? No. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you going? Yeah, I'm going. Oh, oh. hi everyone. <laughs> um, so today we're going to go over uh, getting uh, air sensitive reagents out of a sure soap bottle. Um, and so uh, today I'm just going to do an example with aloe, magnesium, bromide. Um, it'll also work for other uh, allergen level species. Um, but before you start, you want to make sure that your bottle is free of um, white solid stuff because that means that air has reacted, specifically water has reacted with um, whatever your um, air sensitive compound is. And so um, also before you start, you want to make sure that all of your uh, syringes and needles are um, compatible with whatever you're using. And so um, I've, take, I've dried the needle in the oven as well as the glassware. The glassware has been under uh, nitrogen. And I, um, I checked to make sure the needle wasn't clogged before I use it. Um, and you can do that by simply putting it under nitrogen and testing it on a, um, a sensitive part of your skin, such as the wrist or even your uh, cheek. But be careful not to scratch yourself. Um, and so I see that my needle's unclogged and it's cooled in the temperature. And so uh, when I open the sheer seal bottle, um, you'll see that uh, it's already been used before, but you should never have more than two holes in a sure seal bottle. One's your inlet and one's your outlet. Hold on. Go back. I can't, uh, can't really tell. I guess it's... Well, I guarantee there are only two <laughs> holes in that. <laughs> can't see it for some reason. And so, um, I want to... Because when you pull with a syringe, you're creating a vacuum, you need to have a nitrogen inlet to replace um, the liquid that you're taking out. Again, make sure that it's not clogged and poking in a place that already has a hole on it, you just insert the needle in. And so now the the, uh, the bottle is under pressure. Because this is such a large bottle, um, it's heavy enough that it doesn't need to be stabilized, but you do want to use a clamp or a, a metal weight. Um, and then the next thing to do is just to degas your syringe. So you want to insert your um, syringe needle in, but don't go below the level of the liquid. And you want to slowly pull it out. And what you're doing is removing the air that was in the needle as well as in the syringe. And you do that three times. And then you lower the needle below that of the liquid. And you slowly pull. You want to use one hand, so ensure that the uh, needle is secured to the syringe and just use one hand. That prevents you from creating too large of a vacuum and um, the plunger shooting out in the uh, air sensitive reagent. Let's say I want two mils. Go ahead and pull a little extra in, pull the needle up above, and then measure what I want. So I want two mils, and then I want to pull a nitrogen bubble on top of that, because any bubble that's left in here will shoot out, shooting out the air sensitive reagent. So, simply transfer over. And then I'm able to push out and I have my two mils. And then I want to pull some um, nitrogen in, pull the needle out, whoops, and remove that. Set that in the back of the hood, and then you want to rinse the needle immediately to prevent it from uh, being caught. Take out your nitrogen inlet, simply pack it, and store it back in the fridge. And you want to store these air sensitive reagents in the fridge and not the freezer to ensure that you still get a good uh, metal uh, glass seal. Hope that helps.